the end of yesterday's episode, we'd had a disaster. Yep, I think probably most of you saw it, but there probably was a few who gave up because it just was going on and on and on. However, we haven't uh, tried this to see how it's going to hang now. I can honestly say I have not tried it. You're going to see it along with me for the first time, so... Uh, yeah, get, get in, in the little loop there, and how is it going to hang? Slowly raise it up. It's slightly crooked, just very, very slightly. Let's just uh, let it unwind there. I wonder if I was to stretch this out just a little bit here. Um, <clears throat> you know, I think after we paint this knot here, it's, uh, you know, paint this whole thing probably, I don't know, maybe, maybe paint it black so it matches the rest of the easy line. I was going to do it gray, but maybe that's not a good idea. Well, it uh, turned out to be not too bad. You know, you can uh, see that there is a... Uh, a blob of glue there or something, but we had concluded we were going to refer to that as the clevis. Okay, so it could have been worse. It could have been a lot worse. Let's carry on here. Now you will remember there's actually two lines, two easy line lines coming down, and I want them to be separate if I can, because the hook from the crane is going to hold them sort of separately and I think it might look a little bit more realistically if there was two lines coming down and then there was sort of the clevis down here. Uh, that, that's my thinking anyway. Now mind you, this is, is going to be so small and so minute that once again, nobody's probably going to notice it. But uh, I think maybe we better hang it from something a little wider than this pin. And then I'll try and straighten this section out here just a little bit if I can. And, uh, and then we'll paint it with uh, flat black. And it'll cover up some of that shiny uh, CA glue that you can sort of see when the light hits it just right. Now I didn't realize that the CA glue had wicked its way so so far up to the to the loop here, and uh, I don't want to try and pull that apart. I would have preferred that the separation went right down to here, but uh, yeah, I guess we can't have everything. Could have been a lot worse. I thought I had a jar that was already opened up and thinned out a little bit for the airbrush. And I would have actually preferred that, but uh, I guess we'll have to open up a new one here. Now I don't think we're going to have to dip our brush again. Just let it kind of wick its way in there and... That's probably a little bit too much, but... Pretty sure we got it. Okay, we'll let that dry. It sounds like the kids are having fun today. As I was editing out this last scene, I was watching myself paint and I noticed I didn't go high enough and you can actually see a little bit of CA glue glinting out at us. Yeah, we'll redo it and uh, at the end I'm going to do the time lapse thing and uh, we can watch paint dry. You know the old saying, like watching paint dry?
What an awful looking thing this is. It's sure a good thing that it's so small we can't see it. Now we will not be leaving the crane and the uh, aircraft hanging from it on the ship. That'll be one of the last things that we uh, actually put on. I just want to see how low the aircraft is going to hang. It's been suggested that you know, I have the crane turned out a little bit and it sort of gives the impression that the aircraft was maybe uh, had, had just uh, been lifted out of the water. I like that idea. But uh, why don't I get rid of this thing here? It's more of a hindrance than a help right now. Okay. Um, I'll reposition the camera and everything so you can watch me putting this on. Okay, now once again, you are seeing it along with me for the first time. Now the idea is the hook should go like this. Now, okay, clearly it is not going to it is not going to work like this, but it will work if it's hanging over the side just a little bit. I, I don't want to take this off or have to take the ship out, but you can envision what's going to happen here. Probably the uh, the uh, bottom of the floats will probably be at the same elevation as the uh, gunnel is. Um, so it, it could be sort of slightly swung over the side. I think that is a, is a good idea. Uh, more than one person has suggested that. Uh, the crane is not quite straight. I don't know if I'm going to be having to glue this in, in place here or, you know, if I let the crane go slack, it sort of is leaning forward. So, uh, I don't know if the hole has become enlarged or, or if the intention is that, you know, maybe what I could do is I could wedge a little piece of toothpick or something in the hole and poke it in just to make it a little stiffer. But we'll, we'll worry about that when the time comes. We, we don't need it in, in place right now. But obviously it's going to work. I think it's going to look okay. And um, you can see that there's something going on here that maybe shouldn't be there. But on the other hand, you can imagine it being a clevis or something like that. I'll put the macro lens on and we'll just move right in on there and you can see it. Yeah, I think that once the crane is supporting the weight of the aircraft, all the lines are going to basically straighten out there. Um, yeah, I think this is going to be okay. I don't know if we've actually tested this out, but the, our aircraft with the folding wings is going to be sticking out. And, uh, very gently here. Okay, so now when one of the aircraft is sitting on the cradle, how far can our folded winged aircraft stick out of the hangar? Okay, it's going to be sitting, the floats go right on that, that cradle there. Now the catapult has to, the catapults are, are right here, they, they slip in. I won't put them on right now. So, so this aircraft could be sticking out quite a ways actually, which is kind of nice. I keep bending this. Um, now then we got our door. Okay, the door is going to go on something like this. 
Uh, yeah, that'll look okay. Might, maybe it could swing open just a little bit more so that the uh, the the aircraft sticking out of the hangar can be seen better. Uh, this this aircraft could maybe even come out a little further. Okay, and then and then this other aircraft, it'll go on the other side. Um, we do have an extra boat. It's it's one of these, I believe, and uh, but there's no propeller on it. And I'm debating could that be hanging from the other crane? But uh, being as there's no propeller on it, it doesn't look quite right, right. Or maybe the other the other crane could be swung around and maybe locked in its in its position here. Like that's what these are for. The idea is the crane's supposed to swing around and, and lock in place here for so it doesn't swing around when the ship is in heavy seas. Um, okay, yeah, I think that's going to be okay. Maybe this could even come out a little bit more yet. Whoops, I knocked my door over. Well, <laughs> we'll worry about that later. I just wanted to see how it was going to go here. And, uh, let's move it just a little bit so it's not rocking back. Okay, well, it's all going to fit anyway. That's that's the main thing. We'll fasten them down sort of semi-permanently. Uh, well, I guess I guess the aircraft, would, these ones would have to be fastened down. Otherwise, if the case was to be rocked a little bit, they'd be falling around. Um, going to have to have some sort of instructions as to how to move this thing in case I can't move it. Although, maybe by that time I won't care. <laughs> yeah. All right. So, yeah, it's going to work. Okay. A bit of time has passed here now, and I was going to move on to another aspect of finishing up this build, and then I realized, well... I'm still not finished with these aircraft and uh, you'll notice on the top of Tony's air aircraft wings here the decals don't stand out except for where they're supposed to whereas on mine you can especially this one right here the way the lights hitting it this this decal the de the edges of it really stand out and uh, I'm thinking that you know I've, I've got the uh, the matte clear right now. Why don't I just maybe paint the tops of the wings here? I, I don't want to have to go to all the, all the fooling around of hooking up the airbrush and uh, you know I suppose the best way would be to spray it. I'm not really seeing the decals. They don't jump out on the sides adversely. Um, this one of course here it doesn't even have any decals. We don't need to worry about it. I, I imagine that the best way to do this would be to you know to to use the airbrush and spray the whole thing but what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take in on the tops of the wings use the uh, matte clear and uh, see if we can't just hide it and after a few hours we'll, we'll know if it's going to work or not I do have to do a lot of dusting oh now it's down there anyway Let's give it a try. Now I've dusted these off and I think this, what I'm seeing right there is not a piece of dust but a little scratch. And uh, what I want to do is to remember how I've got my lighting set up. And the position of the camera and everything so that we can do a before and after shot. In other words, we can see how the uh, decals are, are visible if I rock the plane forward like I am right now. I'll try and remember to be able to do that exact same angle again after I do the tops of the wings. Um, and I'm only going to do the tops of the wings. And if this doesn't work out, then we'll worry about it. Um, and uh, I think the way I'm going to do it is I'm probably going to use a a wide a wider brush maybe not this one but try and get it put it on quickly 
and not keep working at it so that there's going to be a lot of ridges as it dries, but just let it sort of self-level into all the cracks here. I, I don't want to obliterate the uh, all the details in the panel lines. So uh, that's the way we're going to go here. Um, I'm going to probably won't do a lot of talking for a change while I'm doing it because I can't talk and work at the same time. Either one or the other seems to suffer. Anyway, here we go. Okay, I've just shaken this up, and the only major change I've made here is I've I've moved my uh, spotlight over to the other side because I like to hold the brush in my right hand. And what I want to do is go right up against the edge of the fuselage and not get any on the fuselage if I can and then just go out. Did I say I wasn't going to talk? Oh, I touched the fuselage. Shh, no talking. Let's just leave that now. I noticed that this uh, clear is dissolving the paint. I'm getting uh, green in my brush. Maybe I'll paint these little uh, machine guns black later. We'll see how it goes. I don't want to have air bubbles there. Okay, let's leave that for a couple hours and see how it looks. But notice when I, let me just carefully move this here. Notice here when I went like this with my brush, we got uh, green paint coming out of there. I don't want to get green paint in that. Okay, I do not know if or how I'm going to be able to use these flags. Uh, if you remember, just over a year ago we were talking about uh, whether we were going to use the swastika, and I had decided not to. I do believe that what you're supposed to do is take these, put them in here, and remove parts, parts of this in order to make the swastika. In fact, I received a comment this morning from somebody who was watching way back in uh, episode, around episode 30, and he made a comment. And uh, I think he indicated he wasn't going to use the, the swastika either. Uh, uh, anyway, um, what I'm getting at here is, do you notice there's some really little, tiny little decals right here? I'll put the macro lens on, we can look at them. And what what is good about them, or maybe you might say bad about them, is that the, uh, the, the what you see is only a small part of the decal. The decal is much larger than this, and you wouldn't want, you, in other words, it would have to be trimmed. And I'm just sort of thinking it might be kind of fun to see, could we trim one of these down? And uh, using these solutions, it's, it's not that I didn't know how to put on decals. It's, it's partly because I was lazy, and mostly because I did not have all of this, all of the uh, paint and solution that I needed. So I, you know, when I put the decal very carefully here on these planes, <clears throat> I didn't do it as good as I could have. Or maybe I should put it this way: I knew how to do it, I just didn't do it. But just for the fun of it, let's let's just see how good of a job can I do on a very tiny little. Uh, decal like this where we're going to have to trim it carefully with a sharp knife and I'm going to use the M word sorry beep uh, but uh, yeah let's just get out of here I know this is not the macro lens but because the macro lens moves in on such a small area uh, you won't be able to get perspective going on here so I want you to see that we're using once again the uh, piece of plastic ship that Tony sent to us a little over a year ago. And we're going to use one of these decals right here. Uh, 
and the idea will be I want to try and take this little decal after I've got it all trimmed down as much as I possibly can and we'll try and put it right on the corner right here so that the edge of the decal will be more or less on the edge of this little square piece right here okay I mean there's no use just taking and putting it any old place at all let's try and you know put it in a specific place now not every modeler has an airbrush like I do in fact I only just got one a little over a year ago so I want to see can we do this just by using an ordinary brush and we're gonna just put our clear right there and uh, I'm realizing now that there is no way that we're going to be able to do this experiment in this episode or finish it that is so um, yeah we'll just go as far as we can here and then we're gonna have to uh, cut the episode off um, okay let's let's get our uh, x22 clear right there I don't think we need to put it on real thick I think just enough to fill the pores let it self level here I'm pretty sure that little part is going to fit in that area okay we'll let that dry now maybe I will put the lid on here okay I just left the camera running while I was cleaning up the little brush here let's move on to the next step now I know the light seems to be kind of funny here in other words it's reflecting off the surface of the decal well the reason for that is so that we can see where the paper and the decal the definition around you can see how much larger it actually is than this black thing that is supposed to I believe turn into a swastika um, now what I want to try to do is cut as close to that black swastika outline as possible without cutting into it and um, in order to do that I'm going to have to use the M word but I'm going to be using it tomorrow we've run out of time here so uh, thanks for watching, and all being well, we'll see you tomorrow.